Hello, everyone. Hello, Adventures with Sarah. This is Andrew Malone from Savor the Experience Tours. I'm once again hosting as Sarah is still on vacation, but she'll be back, I believe, later this week. Uh, today, I figured, you know, it's not, I know it's not Wines Day, so we're going to do Wines. We're going to, Monday is going to be Wines Day instead. Um, so I thought I'd bring on a couple of, I want to say friends because I seem like I know them or I'm always chatting with them, but we actually haven't met in person. But I want to introduce Matthew and Shireen from Exotic Wine Travel. Hello. Um, I appreciate it. Yours clearly, right? Yeah. Great. Um, uh, so <clears throat> uh, for those of you, for those of you who've been on some of our tours, um, of course, we do, we do a lot in Croatia. Uh, tonight we're going to cover, well, we're going to cover exotic wine travel story, like how they got here and well, how, what they're doing in Croatia uh, right now, um, and talk about the book they've written, which is, I believe, the first book on Croatian wines. Um, and then they're going to go through uh, different varietals so you get a better idea. I know some of you know some of these varietals, some of you don't, some of you are interested in coming over here and checking it out. So we'll, we'll try to do kind of cover a lot of things. And they've got a few wines that we could taste as well. Well, virtually taste, of course. Um, <laughs> so, yes. So why don't you guys start and tell us, tell us about yourself because it's not like you, I know what in the last five or six years you've, you've become exotic wine travel and I, I'm not even sure how you got there. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. You start. Right. So we started traveling in 2015. It was meant to be a sabbatical. And the trip started in the classic wine regions in Italy, in Spain, and in Portugal. And we moved to less known places like Turkey, Armenia, and So by the end of the year, we covered quite a lot of places. We also check our home, our, our, our credit wine. <laughs> <laughs> or wine related um, things. So we wanted to kind of like make the best use of our resources and also to share with all of other people because in Georgia and also even in Barolo Barbaresco, we realized that there was pretty much a lack of information online in English. Well, sure, there are lots of pieces of information, but there wasn't anything comprehensive. So we wanted to create like a source, a, a guidebook for people who are exploring wine country. And because we started off as a traveler first, so we're really inspired by, are you familiar with Lonely Planet Guide? I, yeah, I, th I, think, every, I think everyone is. That was like the first thing I ever <laughs> yeah, thought before, I, before I came to Europe. Or Rick Steves? Oh. Yeah. Or oh, Rick, Rick Steves guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, sounds so familiar. Um, <laughs> So basically, we wanted to create like a guidebook that is something of that sort, like not Lonely Planet, where you can pick up the book, you can just take bits and pieces from the book, and then you can be, you can guide yourselves through the country through wines. It, we started out as consumers and enthusiasts when we were living in Singapore before. Uh, I'm from American, sharing is Singapore, and I lived in Singapore. Uh, and we started traveling by the, I think by the time we got to Turkey, our, Turkey, Georgia, and Armenia, Shireen made the suggestion that she said, when she looked at our credit card statement and said, oh my gosh, look where all our money's going. That's when we decided, hey, maybe we should, uh, you should write about some of these un unique, exciting wine regions. There's plenty of amazing yeah. stories, amazing people. And uh, we're new to the industry. Shireen, Shireen's a Burgundy lover. I'm a Barolo lover. But uh, as new face, no experience in wine, you can't just go in guns blazing, covering those regions. So it's a little bit of a practical choice, but it was also a very, we, we saw the gap in the industry and we realized that there wasn't anyone or really just focusing purely on lesser known wine regions. So we decided that let's give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> and at least we still survive and it's been five years. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're, we actually got to uh, this part of the world where you're, I mean, how you've been in Slovenia for five years, right? Here, uh, si uh, six and a half. Uh -huh. Ah, we actually came here uh, right after Turkey, Armenia, Georgia. We went, we went some other places. And we came here <laughs> because I was always interested in this part of the world because I'm a I'm a big I was a basketball player in college and in high school, and uh, I was during yeah. the time when all the uh, Yugoslav guys were when you know 
Drajan Petrovic, Stojakovic, Vladi Divac, Tony Kukoc, all those guys. I was always interested in this part of the world. So that's why we, we wanted to come here. Shireen had her own story too. <laughs> Mine wasn't so exciting, actually. I just remember when I was a kid and then all of a sudden I heard that, oh, you know the country where Mother Teresa is from? It's gone now. <laughs> so I always remember Yugoslavia, but we wanted to come here actually to explore the wines of all the ex-Yugoslavia countries, but we really fell in love with Croatian wine. Yeah, yeah. we we were going to write our first, we were going to write our second book actually actually our third wine book about uh, the whole mm-hmm. ex Yugoslavia but we kind of just focused in on Croatia since the fact that there's so many indigenous grapes yeah. there's so many people that are coming here you know not this year but uh, 15 to 17 million people a year and really a lot of exciting stuff happening well you guys are still like welcome to do the whole former Yugoslav in a book i think I, I think actually that would that would be fantastic if if you could do that. Um, so so what is what is the book called that you that you did write on on only Croatia? So here you go. This is the cover: Cracking Croatian Wine, a visitor friendly mm-hmm. guide. I hope you can kind of see the cover. This is actually a picture of a vineyard in Brač. Which you take your people to? Yeah, right? Yes. Oh, okay. You know, I was looking at that and I was wondering like. Is that Pelia shots? But no, okay, that's Brach. Is that Stina? Is that Stina? Yeah, that's, yeah it's so but, stunning okay. how it falls right into the, the Adriatic Sea. And we actually, but uh, yeah, I, 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 th- I, that book was a pretty well received. You know, actually, Jancis Robinson's reviewed all of our books. Some of the book, the first book, not so good reviews, but uh, but people are still buy it, still use it about Georgia, Turkey, Armenia. But this one was well received. Uh, we spoke about Croatian wines all over the world, all around Europe, New York City. Um, it's been it's been a pretty amazing journey. Um, so, what with the um, the book? Is it what was it published two, about two years ago? Is that is that right? Yeah, about less just less than two years ago. Yeah. Okay, all right, and it's still like in print and available. Yeah, it's on there. Amazon, and people are buying, people emailing, buying it all the time, thanking us for you know what's really cool about writing some of these books. We were working on a Hungarian book next, but that mm-hmm. has kind of fallen, th- slowed down because of the situation. But getting that, a lot of people that are have moved away, like maybe Croatian ethnicity or these countries have this, these ethnic ties, mm-hmm. but don't really know about their homelands. We get a lot of those emails, which is kind of rewarding, saying that they feel like they're reconnecting, recon- re- they found this uh, reconnection with their motherland. So yeah, that's yeah. really cool. I noticed that with um, with wine importers in the U.S. when I would talk with them, the ones who would import wines from Croatia or former Yugoslavia, that a big percentage of their business was the the people you know that are like that are trying to reconnect. The thing that is just it's 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 crazy, and I don't know if you've noticed this because well, let's say you guys travel back. I mean, I know right now you're kind of let's say stuck here, um, r- relatively speaking, but you're usually like traveling here and then back to the states or back to singapore or or, or, all, or... all over uh mexico we spent some time in mexico or those wine regions we're, we're mo- most of the time we're around europe because you know what you know 80 percent of the 80 to 85 yeah. percent of the world's wine is made in europe so yeah. we're most most of the year in europe yeah when, when i when i because so before i was before i was uh living in slovenia i was i started my tour company in 2005 so i would just come over two or three times a year run some tours and go back and and back in the states it was fairly uh, it was fairly easy for me to get croatian slovenian a little bit of bosnian even some montenegrin wines online then, then when i moved here i realized oh crap if i want to go get burkic i'm like I have to I have to drive seven hours to Bosnia. Yeah. I cannot actually just go on the internet and be like deep 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 and 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 have it and you know it, it's so it's uh it's actually it's actually funny sometimes in the states you know depending on the situation or where what state you're in it's easier to get wines and here it's like in Slovenia you know it's a lot of Slovenian wines and if there's international wines it's not probably going to be like their old neighbors in Yugoslavia's wines. I mean, some Croatian wine, sure, but yeah. otherwise not so much. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it is really funny how all these countries are so close together. And when I'm in different countries, I would like to, uh, sometimes I have a craving or sometimes I want to do a tasting, you know, a, we can do tastings, you know, with friends or, or professionally, whatever, compare some of these wines. It's imp- just impossible to get neighboring countries wines. It's really, uh, it's really a shame. You know, 
I think the only place in ex-Yugoslavia that has a decent collection is uh, Serbia. They have everybody's wines. And then obviously they have their burgeoning wine industry and the wines are fantastic as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Bel Belgrade is so much larger than, than, well, where I'm at. I think there's more people in Belgrade than all of Slovenia. Yeah, or something, <laughs> something, something close to that. Um, I noticed the same thing, too, with, with food, actually. Well, it, it was more that way before I lived here. Things have changed now just because everyone's opening up to the whole craft food or craft beer or, or what have you and getting, let's say, trying to get more exotic um, restaurants or food in. But when I moved here, people would ask me like, well, what are you going to miss the most about S Seattle? And I was like, the Asian food? Uh, yeah. just, be <laughs> just because- Maybe you know, the Mexican food as well. Here's a hot tip for yeah. whoever's coming to, to Zagreb. Shireen found a place called the Peking Duck. It's not, it's a, it's a, it's a Croatian word, not the English yeah. word. Imports all the Asian spots. So we've been just, she's been going on a cooking spree because we miss Asian food so much. <laughs> Yes, and Mexican food, I would say as well. Although um, uh, there's a great there's a great Mexican place in Split. Uh, American guy has a place in Split, and mm -hmm. and yeah, I, every time I'm in Split, I just I tell everyone like, all right, guys, this is a really good wine bar. Get some tapas here. Try you know whatever. Like it's like if it's a free afternoon for lunch, I'm like I am so getting just tacos or burritos or whatever. Because like for a while, I'd be like, this is like twice a year I'm in Split, so I got. What's go the name Mexican. of the place? Uh, it is oh to Toye Taco. This is uh, thank you for yeah, yeah. you know we you know we spent three months in Mexico in the wine regions, eating great. Oh my gosh, we're just south of San Diego in the Ensenada, in the Baja California, and that's just so, I've always loved Mexican food. Just something I miss when I was living in Asia. Here it's just if you find sixty or seventy percent of the the closeness, then you're then you're happy. <laughs> you will probably eat. <laughs> or either. There's a burrito plate chain that opened in Belgrade and I tasted it and I was like, oh my gosh, this tastes like a Balkan kebab. This doesn't taste like anything Mexican burrito. <laughs> yeah, there's a good place in Ljubljana that uh, um, I think it's been here for about a year and a half. It uh, The owner's from Mexico and they actually have homemade salsas and that would be like the big thing. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. So, but that, that's what I, that when you're in these countries and I don't know, maybe it's because, you know, they were smaller countries and they're newly independent, but it's like, you can get so much great food here, but it's like, doesn't matter if I'm in Italy after two weeks, I'm like, I need, I need some meal. That's not Italian. I'm sure if I was in India or Lebanon, I would be the same way. Cause those are like my favorite foods, but I was like, I need something else. And it was harder. It, now it's easier, but it was hard to find something other than the great stuff you have in the country you live in. I, I, we've noticed a difference just in the last two years. I mean, we're in and out of the region over the last two years, just notice a huge difference, so. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, it's one of those, one of those nicety things, just like, I mean, everything else, the, the, I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing if you were here 10 or 15 years ago, trying, trying to write this book, like what, what your thoughts on, on Croatian wine as a whole would have been then, as compared to now. You know, and it's so funny because for people that don't know, you know, of course, you know, all these countries are only 20 something years mm -hmm. old, you know, really became independent in the nineties. I have to say, because obviously all the countries, Slovenia, Slovenia, and Croatia are kind of out in front of everybody, but, uh, and they've improved drastically. When we go back now and we've been tasting the last couple of years, Croatian wines, 10, 15 years old, a lot of them have aged surprisingly well. I'm quite shocked. Mm. So that that would be that would be one thing I wanted to ask you about and let everyone know. So when you're not when you're not writing the Croatian guidebook, uh, it seems like because I just see you know I just get the blurbs on Facebook where you're at or this or that. What else are you doing? Because it seems like you're you're getting invited to like I don't know the Balkans wine tasting thing or the this wine festival. So when you're not writing specifically just for your own book, what other things are you doing? So we do research full time, we travel, and then now we can travel. So we are tasting from all over the world. We get samples, we meet our friends to do tasting as well. The, the entire process is we usually do research first. And then when we see a country that's doing relatively well with good demand from people and, you know, in terms of a standard, they are there and they are they're exported as well. That's when we get into deciding that we're going to write into a book, which was what we decided for Hungary. But now that, you know, again, our Hungary project is, is in pause. 
So we're now basically just creating content, free content on our website. So we have articles, uh, videos that is free for all for everybody to learn about wine. Yeah, so and we cover we cover all countries. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, we cover Italy a lot, a lot of the exotic regions of Italy that people don't know about. In Sardinia, a couple times a year, Puglia, all uh, Valle de Osta. We're cover some weird regions, France, Portugal a lot. So Austria, Hungary, that's, Slovakia. That's the thing about, about what we call exotic wine, right? Because I think even in the most famous wine countries like Italy and France, there are pockets of places that are still lesser known. I mean, take for example, Muscade in, in France. There are so few people enjoying those wines and you can buy like a 10 year old Muscade for, for 15 euros or something. Even for me, a lot yeah. of regions of France are exotic. I mean. Anything probably besides Burgundy, Bordeaux, and the Rhone is exotic because mm-hmm. none of those other regions are ever covered or visited. Yeah. I mean, when's the last time anybody's had a Gaillac? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I was going to say, Puglia, I was just there for the first time, well, right before everything kind of shut down uh, uh, early, earlier this year. And yeah, I was just, I was looking, you know, I, it, I'm totally new. I have, I have far less wine knowledge and you guys do and I have never had any Puglian wines that I you know specifically went out and tried maybe I had a few and and I went to some, I tried some went to some wine shops and I was looking at prices and I was like am I in Italy are these prices correct because like I think it's cheaper to buy wine in Puglia than it is like where I live in Slovenia mm-hmm. and I was just like oh okay yeah not everything is you know not not everything is uh is priced the the normal Italian wine uh, prices no and, and that's what our aim is too is to help people find uh, the best value the best you know value for money wines that you should be seeking out Puglia is up there uh, we also go to the, the, the high profile regions, Napa, Bordeaux, that type of stuff, because you always need contrast. You always, and, 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 our, and our, we have to show the readers that, that, we, that we have some credibility that we're not only just drinking <laughs> <laughs> the weird wines. I think, I think when we talk about pain points of wine travelers or wine lovers who travel around the world, uh, I think most of us can relate to this. So, so our book is meant to solve a very specific problem. When you go to a wine country, maybe you have five days, maybe you have like two weeks at best. Sometimes you are on tours like with people like you who can come around to different regions and introduce them to certain wines. But the thing is they will still be left alone for dinners or lunch sometimes. And looking at a menu in a different language can be so overwhelming. So if for someone who really wants to make the best use of their time and appreciate every single meal, you know, they can simply pull out our guidebook and figure out, okay, what are the wines that I can try? What are the wines I can pick up from the menu? So that's, that's the purpose. We want to help our, our readers to save money and time. Even for our articles as well, that's what we do. We make it practical so people can pull out certain recommendations and they know what to do when they're at the restaurant. Right yeah. Yeah, I mean, because that would be, I mean, I would, if I had a book, if I had a book like yours, just for like a small version for Puglia or other places, because I, I get so used to where I'm at. Like, I, if I don't know the winemaker, like I know all the wines, I know of the winemaker, I know what I want, I know what this goes with this for, let's say, you know, three or four of these kind of small ex-Yugoslav countries. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, it's hard for me to think like, oh, what if I was just here the first time? Like, you know, what, what you, and then as soon as I'm in another place, I'm like, oh yeah, now I'm like, now I'm like people on my tour, they're like, what is, what is Tehran? What is this? Yeah. And I was like, and I was like, ah, cause to me, it's just so, it's so second nature now, because to be honest, like I, even though, even though I lived in, in Washington state and that's the second largest wine producing state in the US, like I, I was a beer guy. Like I found about, I, I got into wines cause I, I kept coming over here and I enjoyed things and people were like, oh, this is really good and all, I mean, and it's very different from of course, what most people would, would have in the US from let's say the typical European wine producing countries. So it's like my, my knowledge is really based on, on the places I, I, go, I go here, which is why it's great. Cause I, when, when I'm reading you guys, it's like, Oh, okay, yeah, I, I, I could learn something about this French chateau or this place or these, these other places that are famous that like, you know, I know very little about or I think that I can't afford to be drinking. <laughs> well, thanks. So that's, what, that's, our, that's what the goal is. That's the game, goal. That's, that's what our aim is. So for if, if we're going to we'll jump into Croatian wines and varietals. Mm-hmm. You guys could talk about some of the things you like and also do a little virtual tasting with people. Mm-hmm. But let's let's take out let's take out. I'm in Slovenia. 
you guys are in Croatia and have the Croatia book. Let's take out those two countries. Um, what would be what would be a what would be a country that that has a really good up and coming wine scene that let's say in the last few years you've been like either surprised by or just like oh we need to tr track this more. I mean I know there's probably more than one, but if you had if you had one place to recommend like for people to keep an eye on what, what would what would you have i have two countries but in mind but sure you can go first probably i think a lot of people have been talking about it already but i really do believe that portugal is a country to look out for because of the value the value in each one you can vintages that are and they are released much later as well at a very good price and i find that portuguese wine they are made accessible for a lot of people and of course there are different styles of wine as well the full bodied sort and also the higher acid a mineral white wine as well yeah i, I agree with i love portugal mm -hmm. so much i think for more even more exotic countries the two that stand out to me are hungry and uh in portugal uh, sorry in moldova, moldova I, I, I think say, moldova yeah. is oh, very yeah. important is very yeah. mixed and very low low price wines. I actually think uh, that this triangle. Uh, I think in Eastern, uh, kind of Central Eastern Europe. I think Slovenia, Hungary, and Croatia to some extent are, are kind of the highest above mm -hmm. everybody else yeah. uh, right now. As it goes right now, but Moldova is even further east, and and the quality is very high. There's not very many producers. The quality is exceptionally high. Uh, on that note, coming from Singapore and I go to Hong Kong a lot, I know that Slovenian wine has a pretty good reputation in, in Hong Kong and Singapore. Because the wine is fantastic, yeah. it's up to you, as you know. <laughs> nice, you know, Moldova was one of those COVID casualties for me because I was going to be there in late March, just with the, oh. uh, with the, a couple had been with me before and I said, they wanted to go to Romania. And I was like, okay, can we like at least do a day in Moldova? Cause I, if nothing else, I have to try some wine in Moldova and I have to go to one of those places, uh, not so much for the wine, but just, I want to be able to drive the car through the want through those massive wine cellars that I've heard yeah. about. Have you been to one, one of those places? Cause been to all of them, yeah. we've been to all of them, uh, summer humongous yeah you got you drive the whole car through the cellar it's it's pretty uh pretty insane oh drinking water not wine <laughs> <laughs> yeah my um my wife's actually russian so uh i've gotten some i've learned you know like what the soviets used to like and i believe almost all of their champagne came from um, Krikova, uh, soviet Krikova. soviet uh, moldova which would explain like why such a small i mean moldova is so small and it's so obscure i think that might that might be the most obscure country in, other than Belarus and Moldova is not on the news. So it's even more obscure, but it's, it's so small, but it would, ha it has these, those massive wineries. It just kind of blows my mind. Well, it's got the, you know, it's got, it's tiny. It's got three times the uh, vineyard area than Slovenia mm -hmm. does. Three times really? Slovenia. Oh my yeah, God. It's, it's well, the largest. I'm getting the hell out of Slovenia then, I guess. It's <laughs> the largest, uh, it, it's the country that um, the normal population is employed by the, uh, by, or has to do with wine it's like the largest proportion in the world yeah really okay wow i i, I didn't know that because it's it's so tough when you haven't been to a place and a place like that you're like okay there's the capital which okay that doesn't look so interesting then then i know there's a there's some big vineyard there's some big wine producers there and some big sellers and and that's it it's just so but yeah it's so off the beaten path so there's, there are some outstanding wines to be i mean really outstanding yeah. top-notch wines to be had there mm. All right. Okay. Well, then that's that's good. that's that's good. I will. But I'm guessing, like, you, you, when you when you had these wines, it's always been pretty much in Moldova. Uh, outside too. All, our first okay. time was actually when we were judging competitions. We come across these Moldovan wines are sent all over the place. That's when mm -hmm. we first tasted them. Yeah. So we tasted in Romania. It was available in a wine bar in Romania. And also, again, coming from Singapore, I know that Moldovan wine is actually available in Singapore. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, one thing I'd like to do uh, after we're after we've wrapped up is at some point I want to put up some links. Obviously, I mean, you you guys have your link to your to your to your Facebook, but I love I love because I've got like some I've had clients from Singapore and they've asked me like, hey, you know who, where I can get wines from these countries or that country. So I, I and I try to do that if anyone's listening, tuning in, or has questions. I'll, I'll answer them later on, but I also love to give out some links for people to find even some wine wine importers uh, in the states because most of us most of us the watching are are in the states right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get some good ideas for that. Okay, so 
Um, enough about uh, Moldovan wines, although now I'm quite curious about it. Let's 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 talk about let's talk about Croatian wines. You guys, um, uh, for you guys, you guys tell me what do you what do you, what do you really like? What were, what were the wines that were that you maybe didn't even try until you got here, or the ones that kind of captivated you or kind of got your attention? I think to make it useful for everybody watching. So if you're coming to the country for the first time, most of the time people want to taste local grapes, local wine. Right, not a, even though there are some delicious Merlot Cabernet blends, some Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc, but Croatia's got 100 and, 140 indigenous grapes. And uh, the ones you got to know mostly for white, Rashivina, which makes a fresh white wine, Push bigger, kind of a bigger bodied white wine. And what we have here, uh, one of Shireen's favorite is Malvasia, Malvasia it's, Istriana. Yeah, it's it's from Malvasia, so it's different from the other Malvasia. It's a, it's a strain from, from the Istria part, so, which is also available in Slovenia. Yeah, yes. that's, I, so, I think that's, that's for me is like the, that's the go-to wine. Like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's the easy thing to, to, you know, like if, if you're, if you're not so adventurous, but you want to try something local, like you can't mm -hmm. go, you can't if you pick a good producer, you can't go wrong with that. This is yeah, this is my favorite example. We're actually drinking it. I actually like Malvasia Istriana or Malvasia Starska when it's made into an orange wine, which is you know trendy for people nowadays. This is producer. We this is my favorite. This is a uh, Klai. This is the Sveti Yakov made from old yeah. vines. And uh, you want to show the color? I don't want to because I don't know. So this is made in the orange style, macerated on the skin for about two months. So, which means that usually when you make white wine, one you would press the juice off the skin immediately, whereas this stays on on the skin ever after it, uh, for two months before it gets pressed. And the color of the wine comes from the skin. That's how we get red wine, and this is how the white wine turn orange. Um, before we get to this wine, I think it's important for people to know when it comes to Istria Malvasia. Like exactly you said, uh, there is the easier, more accessible style, where it's fruity, citrusy, floral, very light, easy to drink with great acidity. And then you go into the middle part where maybe it's in a little bit of oak, and then you get this Chardonnay-esque, you know, more yogurt-y kind of body. Whereas now when we're looking at this, it's towards the extreme end, which makes this grape so interesting because it goes from the lighter style to this extreme end where you get a bit of tannins, you get a little bit of this bitterness, what we call phenolic on the finish. You get really full body and you have amazing, I would say this almost smells like perfume because it's so intense on the nose. I, and I think for where you are, I think this little corridor of the world, uh, Slovenia, you know, where you are, uh, especially Western Slovenia, Eastern Italy, Colio and Istria, mm -hmm. both Slovenia and Croatia, you have to try orange wines when you're in yeah. this part of the world because oh, it's yeah. a specialty. Yeah, it is. And I didn't, real, I didn't realize really how much we have compared to, yeah. com compared to elsewhere. I don't, you, I don't know you, if you know uh, Simon Wolf, but he wrote the Amber Revolution mm -hmm. uh, book on orange wines. And we actually did a tour a couple, a couple of years together. And it was like when I was reading his book going, Wow, like Slovenia is a really small country, and like I think, was it like other than Italy, Slovenia had seemingly like the biggest chapter of yeah. with with orange with orange wine makers, and yeah, it's 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 something that um, tr trendy or not trendy or what I mean, people have to try it because that it, it is not it's not just that a lot of great winemakers are making it here, but it's it really it really restarted here, let's say. No, I have a story about this wine in particular. I, I just thought of this. This is so funny because uh, I, this is a little bit for more people that are more geeky. Uh, we were drinking this exact wine uh, in New York City with collectors. Uh, it was a, a Croat American wanted to show some of his country's wines. And it was Barolo and Nebbiolo night. So we were drinking really high class cult wines. And they brought out this uh, Sveti Jakob Malvasia. And I remember one, one we were tasting also a very famous producer, a Nebbiolo. And one of the guys, he was a lawyer. He was looking at it. He was smelling this orange wine. He was smelling the Nebbiolo. He tasted it. He had a confused look on his face. And I said, what's wrong? He said, this, he's pointing to the Malvasi. He's like, this is more structured than this, than the Nebbiolo, which is one of the most structured grapes on the planet. <laughs> so... Oh. 
with the with Malvasia, like it's funny. Normally, normally I would in a normal year I would be I don't know how however many tours I would have done by now. And it's right around let's say mid September when when I'm when when I'm at wineries with my guests and I'm like you know what the, the fresh Malvasia is done with. Like I'm like you guys drink it, you try it, you're you're here. I'm like I'm like I've had it. Like summer is over. It's this thing that just always snaps in me. I'm like I just cannot drink any more freaking fresh wines. You know, it's like <laughs> I love I, I love it. I mean, in this year, I like I wish I was in the position to be like God. I'm so sick of all these <laughs> fresh wines. I want you know it's autumn. Let's get some you know. Uh, but um, is that's like I always think of like that's when I know like that's for me is like when the autumn season hits. Is like okay, let's put away the fresh Malvasia. Mm -hmm. uh, for Andrew and let's get him something else like this yeah. <laughs> and uh, then for red uh, for red grapes I would think uh, anyone say anything else about this wine that no, we're go ahead, move on. you want to pour a little in here so you don't have to drink it all you can pour it in those. and now Ed, can you guys talk a little bit on because I'm sure you've had some have you had the, the, the Malvasia the one in Dubrovnik the one near near Dub Dubrovnik yeah, the Malvasia Dubrovnika it actually is uh, this is hardcore wine geek stuff it's actually um that grape is actually Malvasia di Lipari, which is famous for uh, the Lipari wines, the island of Lipari in Sicily. It's the same, it's the same grape. It's different okay. than Malvasia Istriana. But I think the wines made in a fresher style are quite impressive. Yeah, it has actually really nice body with good acidity. It's surprising. And it's again a very good summer wine, but also when you made it into a fuller body style, it can take you through your autumn as well, Andrew. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I've just, I've had a little bit, I've never visited a winemaker there. So, you know, for me, for me, it's like, you know, not just the wines I drink, but like who I've met, because you learn so much more just with, with that. And I haven't had that experience that like Dubrovnik and South is like, that has its own, um, let's say, allure for, for visitors. Um, but, 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 but like, I think like, as soon as you go South of Pelia shots, it's like, okay, like there's probably good wineries there, but it just, it seems like Dubrovnik kind of like, captures everyone's attention so i haven't i haven't really gone out and checked out vineyards and winemakers in that area there's there's about there's a handful there's about south of dubrovnik there's about three to four producers uh at a high level there's a lot of producers because croatia there's tons of producers but uh there's about three or four doing it at a high level so you want to talk about red grapes which one do you want to move to uh we're going to taste this the plava okay for red grapes for people um Definitely your specialty since you're there, uh, Taran and Rafosco of Penistia and Slovenia. Also, we have, we're not going to taste it. We have one from Pai. Also, we love this producer. He's one of our favorite producers, not only in Croatia, the world. This is Otocento Red. This is a blend of Merlot and Rafosco. Do uh, you take your clients to Clay, by the way? I, I do, although I have to say, I probably had more of my clients go to Piquentum, his other, well, mm -hmm. Dimitri, Dimitri's yeah. other um, uh, place, just because how many times are you going to go to like a 1920s Italian, yeah, bunk, you know, water nice. supply, like bunker place to drink mm -hmm. your wines, which is, and Buzet is such a nice till town. So yeah, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, the, the thing is always is, you know, when, because Dimitri's doing two wineries, it seems like he's running two wineries. It's, it's kind of hard to, you know, I, there's certain times of year was like, I don't even want to call him because he's way too busy with, yeah. with, with doing wines. Let's yeah. face it. So, and then the red grape Croatia is most famous for. I love it to Shireen because she's so passionate about this grape. So the flagship red grape of Croatia, I would say, is Plavac Mali, which is grown in Dalmatia. What you would expect is tannins. <laughs> uh, when it's well made, right, it would still be firm, lightly astringent, but it can go towards alianico, nebbiolo kind of tannin. So you do as like. The people who like tannins do really appreciate it. And of course, coming from Dalmatia, you're expecting Mediterranean flavors. So you can get a little bit more riper fruit. The cool thing about Plavac Mali is despite being tannic and full body, it actually has a lot of red fruit flavor when it's done well. So you're expecting strawberry, you're expecting cherry, you're expecting rose. And that's a very nice contrast that makes um, Plavac Mali such an interesting wine that I can assure you when you taste Plava Tamale, you will say that this is not like anything I've tasted before. Some of the best examples also deliver garlic taste, which is kind of like this dry Mediterranean flavor or Mediterranean up flavor, sometimes even anchovy. So you're really expecting this whole spectrum of flavors from, from herbaceous to fruity to to I would say um, like a umami flavor as well, which makes it very, very interesting. 
And we have an example here. Uh, do you, you, most of your clients are Americans, right? Most people that go on tour uh, with you? The majority are, but I have about 40% Australians actually, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so <laughs> people that, just uh, before I show the producer, I think you take people that, but for people that don't know, uh, and they're Americans that love Zinfandel, Plavitz, Zinfandel is originally Asian and Montenegrin, you know, along the coast, yeah. it's called Trivadragar Sorianek Kastelinski. Oh, hold on a sec, hold on. Because I swear to God, there's one word in Croatian. I mean, it's a little easy for me to say Croatian words uh, compared to the tourists, but that the the other the other word for the um, uh, trip uh, drag is something I could. I always try saying it, and I'm just like, oh, screw it. I cannot. That's say that word. Now. What are we gonna say? Cyril Yanak. Yanak. Kastolansky. <laughs> just think of it like a Russian, like you're oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, I, know. I, like know. A Russian I swear that is like my tongue twister. I'm like, yeah, like, you know, the granddad for the, uh, just, just, <laughs> just say, so just say, so Yannick. Yeah. 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 You got it. Just, uh, so anyways, we have, I, I think, you know, this winery, Stina, this is also, okay. there's, <laughs> there's nothing on the label. It's just a white it's label. Right. Exactly. Well, yeah. now, now, now you would, you, you probably know why, why do you think it's just a white label? Uh, because idea? the island of Brach used to be known for this mining white stones. And yep. if you go to the, the winery, just the old cooperative, it's all these beautiful mm -hmm. white stones. So the, the label's beautiful. It's just white stone with the engraved here. This is the Plavitz Mali Maestor, one of their top wines. Uh, I think it's one of the, even though it's not from kind of the spiritual homeland of Plavitz, it's one of the better examples. I'll let you yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing about Plavat Mali. There are so many producers and there are a lot of producers who are still trying to learn about their own great varieties to make it in a more accessible and international style as well. So I think with Stina, they nailed the part in the vineyard, also nailed the part in the cellar as well. So it's something that makes it very accessible. I wanted to go back to the white stone thing that you, you were talking about, because for the American audience, the white stones of Braj is actually was actually sent from Croatia to America to build a white house. Yeah, part of it's yeah. Braj stone. So yep, it, um, it, it, exactly. And you can still see, you can still go to the, some of these little uh, villages in the in the uh, interior of the island and mm -hmm. see these people working on on stones. I mean, there's some really amazing um, uh, what you call it, like uh, galleries just of mm -hmm. just of this Braj stone. So yeah, do, that's. Do you, do you like Plavitz Mali being? Okay, so here's here's my thing. I, I'm very because you know for that for everyone watching, I didn't I didn't ask them. I didn't know they told you guys told me you were gonna have Clyde, but I didn't ask like all the wines you were gonna have. So <laughs> for me, I'm kind of surprised you picked uh, Stina or let's say something from Brach, but that's fine because I feel kind of guilty. But most of the Plavats I like is more stuff I would find on Brach or Huar because mm -hmm. Plavats from Pelia Shots. It is so, it is so strong. It is so, mm -hmm. it has so much alcohol. And I'm like, I'm like, a, I, I like wine, but I really like it with food. And that stuff, I just, uh, for the, in general, for the most part, it's hard for me to drink it with food. So I'm going to have a half a bottle of that, of that wine from Stina, you know, easily. And otherwise, if I go to most probably shot producers, I'll have Plavats and I'll just have a, have a glass, but it's, 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 um, it's weird. It's like the island version of Plavats to me seems in general very, very, let's say mellow or, or easy to get into than the hardcore stuff on Pelia shots. I think it, uh, for, for this is geeky stuff for for uh, those who don't know. So what happened the problem with Plavats Mali is it the grapes don't ripen evenly. So you can have we have pictures we just we were there recently. We have red berries and green berries. Can't make wine with green berries. So on uh, Pelle shots, they let them ripen so much where you have some ripe berries and some raisins. So then there's more sugar and then that's going to equal more alcohol. Mm -hmm. and, but that's yeah. also the cool thing as well about people coming to Croatia because <laughs> even with the same variety, when you go to different islands, you are really experiencing different kind of wines and you really taste what people may call the terroir in the wine as well. I, I generally think though, I generally tend to agree uh, far Brach Komarna, which is on the mainland, but it's a new region, make lighter, more drinkable plavats. Do you take people to Vis ever? Have you been to Vis? Uh, I, yeah, I've been to Vis. And it, 
it, not so often because I mean, part of the allure is it's so far away, not everyone can yeah. go there. But you know, so you're like, hey, let's do a three and a half hour ferry ride. Um, but yes, I, I yes I have, and yes I've had I've I've had I, I've had a Vugava there and and Plavat there, and I really if this was if this was one hour from the coast like Broch, um, well it would be to, it would totally probably destroy the island. But then I probably would go to Vismor. It's just. <laughs> You know, it's a matter of time. <laughs> it, uh, it, the, it's a great, fantastic terroir for Plavats Mali. Producers are very simple, kind of rustic, but I think, I think there's tons of potential there. Who knows if that potential comes to fruition because the ferry ride and all that stuff, you can't even find the, it's very hard to find uh, wines from Vis and Zagreb even. There's only one or two restaurants that actually have wines from Vis. Yeah, I Florida. was going to say, that's one thing that I've, that I've noticed is if, I mean, if you go to an island and you like any wine from an island, you should you should buy it there, drink it yeah. there. I mean, even if you're not going to bring it back home to the U.S., um, you know, you want a bottle for later on or you, because it seems like like wh like whatever whatever like Brach or Var and these islands are really small. I haven't been to Greece, but I could I just know that there's the the, the size and the population so much small so much smaller on Croatia that everything just stays on the island. Yeah. And even getting like Brach olive oil is really good, but that's also like you don't see that around. It's, I, I would tell people, anybody that visits, you're right. If you like something, buy it. Especially if you're making a tour of the country, you're not going to find Istrian wines in Dalmatia. Mm -hmm. You're not going to find Dalmatian wines in Istria. The only place really is Zagreb. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, it's not on high on the tourist list. People fly to the airport and then they head off to the coast. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it really is. I mean, it might be the best place to like, hey, at the after you've gone to all the regions and tasted all these different wines and 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 now you want to get that extra suitcase to, you know, to, you know, get 40 pounds of wine back home. Like that might be the best place to go to to, to actually get everything, because yeah. it seems it, it does. There's a there's a there's a there's a few wine shops in Split um, that that I will when I, when my usually I don't spend so much time there. But when my guests are at Diocletian's Palace, I'm going to the wine shop and like, okay, I'm not taking the ferry to these islands. So what do they have from these islands? You know, doom, 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 just so I can share them with, with people because um, it's, you, like you said, it's, it's so hard to get in and, you know, you're one hour away and even shorter if you just like as a crow flies and it's hard to get this stuff there. You know, that's one, another inspiration behind our books, actually, especially the Croatian book. There's so much fantastic wine that's hard to get. And you have to sift through a lot of, well, you go to local Canobas, a lot of times you're served the house wine, which is, quite bad made by made by some guy's cousin in the backyard it's real rustic and people walk away with the impression that oh croatian wines are terrible which is it's it's not the case it's just the the best wines you need to sift through and you really need to know because people don't understand also croatians themselves are huge wine drinkers just like slovenians so yeah, the, i think we're always like in the top four or five countries in the world for consumption per capita so yeah so a lot of the best wines are taken uh especially in croatia by tourists and then by the locals and that leaves not much for export yeah no that's that's true that that's true have you guys been to um have you been to uh, pog island mm -hmm. yeah have you, have you, I'm sure, I, I know you've, I don't need to ask if you've been to boschkanats but um <laughs> I for us for us best restaurant yeah, for us, it's the best restaurant. It's in best Croatia. restaurant in Croatia. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it it's 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 something special. And once again, even though it's really not far away, and it's not even very far from the mainland, it's just like it's like the it. I guess it's like the best things are like the one like the. It's like the journey is the hardest to get to. So it kind of mm -hmm. it kind of like says, "Hey, okay, everybody and your brother, like you can't come here because it's just not really next to everything else." Uh, so you have to make that extra effort to get there. But yeah, I, re I really enjoy their their wines, their food, the whole, it, it's like one of those, like, um, you know, like one, like they've got everything there. So you just show up and it's like, okay, great. We're going to have the amazing dinner. We've got the wines. We have the location. The olive oil is really great there. So. So for those people that may watch you don't know, it was actually featured on uh, Anthony Bourdain, late, the late Anthony Bourdain's No Reservations when he came to Croatia and he was blown away. Uh, I remember in the episode, he, he's drinking the Boschkanets Red, and he's like, this wine is bleeping awesome, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he also said, like, I'm a bleeping idiot for not coming here sooner. <laughs> but uh, anyways, it's, a, it's now a one Michelin star. Uh, just got a Michelin star this year. We haven't been this year. We usually are there every year. Just really 
everything is local. Everything's from Pog Island. Pog's famous for cheese. It's probably the only cheese in. It's a. a it's a protected. It's a cheese with uh, protected origins. So it's just a phenomenal cheese with blended sheep and sheep and cow milk. And I think you can get that now in some places in the states. I, I I know one of the I think one of the places in the Pike Place Market in Seattle was carrying Pog Ooh. like five or six before I left because I remember someone telling me that they they saw it there. So yeah, it's like little by it's like little by little. God knows how much it would cost in the states <laughs> just to get a little chunk, but you know. Um. <laughs> Weird enough, so funny you mentioned Pike's Place. You know, I, wor- I worked at Starbucks for about six years actually. <laughs> first. First, the first Starbucks right there in Pike's Place. I was actually there oh. too as well. <laughs> did not did not know that. Um, so what other what other um, what are some uh, let's let's go let's go. Um, what would be some accessible wines you think that you can you could look for in the states? I mean, you pro- I mean, I'm I've been gone for so long. I have really have no idea. And unfortunately, one of the wine importers I knew the best, they've closed their shops at the end of last year or so. I don't have so many great recommendations for like how Americans can get a hold of some of this wine. So first of all, the two wines that we showed today are definitely available in the U.S., especially for Clyde because the owners are actually based in New York. Um, definitely recommend Vico Sica. And then the second one will be Stina. I know that Ma- Matoshevich and Venuti both are in Istria. They are exported to the U.S. as well. And both of them make um, Malvasia and also Tehran. So those are very accessible, very good introduction, safe introduction to Croatian wine. I think that I think that actually also uh, there's three resources people can go for in the States. Uh, you, you're probably talking about Blue Danube, the guy that closed mm-hmm. down. His uh, former employees are now started a company called Duncan Granger. Oh, okay. That, okay. That's, that's, I did not know that. Okay. Duncan um, Granger has selection from all over Eastern Europe. Uh, also, wines.com. A lot of, a lot of Dalmatian wine can be shipped right to your door in the States. And then uh, we actually have a partner called the wine and more. We actually have a discount code. Actually, people want to use it for 10% off and they can ship around the States and there's a pretty decent selection there. So wine and more.com, Croatian premium wine.com, Duncan Granger.com are three resources if people want to try Croatian wine. They have Slovenian wines too as well. So oh yes. I, I think I I think I've I think I've I have seen their, their their site before and I was like, oh okay I'll check for this region or this whatever. And I was like, okay, they have quite a bit, not just, you know, so that would be I will I will to for those of you watching, I will get those, I'll get the links from you guys right after sure. we're done and I'll I'll put those up. And if you have a discount uh, code you want to share, then I could uh um, th- throw that on there as well. What would be, <clears throat> what would be, let's say, I mean, and I, I, we've talked about, we've talked about some geeky stuff. What for, for, and I, and I, and I do have some people who, you know, they, they, they want to try the funkier, the geekier, the, the better. What, what, like, can you give me like one thing that's just like, here's something really strange, like really hard to find, but you know, you've got it in your book. So, something there that's, that's, um, that's, like once you've had your Plavats and your Malvasia and your Tehran and whatever that you got to give a, sh- a shot out if if you want something a little bit different. I would say Prochac, which is a sweet wine made in Dalmatia. What's really interesting about Prochac is even when you go to homemade winemakers, they make excellent Prochac. The whole idea of Prochac is, is a wine for celebration. A lot of winemakers, professional winemakers and home winemakers, they make a Prochac and then they keep it for their child's wedding or 21st mm-hmm. birthday or something along that line. So there is a deep tradition. It's almost like a, a homemade recipe secret. And it's really fun because it takes you to a different journey and different route when you start searching for Prochac because that's when you go to people's house and you ask them, oh, do you have Prochac? Yeah, I, th- I think that's that's a great book because I love sweet wines. Stina makes a pro check actually. Mm-hmm. Being like visitors, okay, all right, that's fine. It's yeah. very rare, very rare. Yeah. So, uh, for me, all the producers you take tours, uh, you go and you visit a lot in Istria and Dalmatia on the coast. That's where most visitors in Croatia go. There are tremendous uh, examples of food and wine and the continental portion of Croatia that people don't even think about. There's one producer that we love very much called Eningi. He was one of the first uh, private producers in Croatia. 
does he's like 80 years old just planted 10 more hectares does everything himself and you can find these wines in the supermarket they have terrible labels but one of his premier wines is called Venier White Venier Bielli and I remember giving it it's so good I remember giving it to a, an owner of a champagne house and he said I thought this was also a, a Grand Cru wine from Alsace France Whoa, this is, this is probably somewhere in Slavonia, is that right? Or yes, Slavonia, Canada? and you can get this wine in the supermarket, and in the supermarket, it's like 15 euros, and it's just tremendous, tremendous wine. Uh, it's a blend of, I think, Gordstaminer, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Gris, Grachevina, and uh, maybe there's a little shard. It's a, it's a single vineyard blend. Age is always aged. So the current vintage on the shelf is like 2008 or 2010. For 15 just euros, wow. Phenomenal, phenomenal wine. Just outstanding wine. I, I think I think we need a I need to create with you guys some kind of like okay, because people like going to grocery stores when they travel. I mean, I think you you guys are the same way. It's like, let's see what they got here. Would be great to be like, what's like what's some really good steals? Like, you know, it's like, you know, like fantasy sports, like who's the steal yeah. of the draft? It's like, who is the yeah. steal? What's the steal of, of the grocery stores? Because a lot of times you're like, it can't be that good, especially at this price or whatever. And you would just be like, I'll just buy it at the winery. But I'm sure there probably are some really good things. There's, you know, one, 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 we actually showed this in a master class. Sharina's, uh, we're also good friends with the winemaker. It's one of the biggest producers in Croatia, biggest producer in Istria, but don't let that fool you because the wines are good. Uh, Vina Laguna Malvasia. You can get it on the shelf sometimes three to five euros. And it's wonderful fresh wine. I mean, even the back in box is good. Yeah. yeah. I talked to a local, I talked to a winemaker, for, or sorry, winemaker, a wine writer from Austria for, Fal, for a guy that worked for Falstaff magazine, pretty famous magazine. And he said that he liked it so much that he bought six cases when he came on holiday oh. to take back yeah. to Austria. Yeah, that, that, that one is when it's because it's, it, I see it all the time. On, I've, I've had it, I've seen it all the time on the menu. And sometimes I'm like, you know, it's so inexpensive. You know, it's like if I if I order this, what do people think? They're like, oh man, he's he's like he's going with the cheapest Malvasia on the menu, and you know that's why you're like, don't look at the menu, like yeah. You know, but it's like it is really good, and I know it is. It's a bigger is a bigger producer, and I'm you know, I, of course I'm always trying to give as much money as I can to the small producers, but damn, like that's a really really good value wine. You know, it's so funny in Croatia because it's all small producers, just like Slovenia. When I say big producer, I think Vina Laguna only makes only. This is going to sound big to be makes like a million bottles a yeah. year, which sounds humongous. Uh, and it is for Croatia. But when you're talking about uh, champagne houses, when you're talking about France, Spain, it lets nothing. That's a drop. I mean, that's that's a that's a tiny winery compared to some. Yeah, it's of these. not like some like factory. Like okay, we're having robots doing twenty four hours a day just bottling things up. Yeah, I mean, in, in North Macedonia, you know, the southern part of uh, ex Yugoslavia, a medium sized winery is eight million liters a year, which is about you know close to twelve million bottles a year. So, wow. Yeah, that 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 that's. Cr I think I think we might, there was something. I think it was you guys posted this on the on something about the, 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 which all the former republics and what they, what the total percentage is. And I, 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 I figured like Macedonia is going to surprise me, but whatever their percentage was of the total wine produced now in all these countries, I was like, holy crap, that's like, that's, that's a lot. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Cause I see the, I see Stobie red, you know, for three euros a pop everywhere. So they Stobie's must be good actually, but they, I think they made statistically close to 80% of the wine in ex Yugoslavia. North yeah Boston. yeah yeah I, I i think so and i think now they yeah they have they must have like the two or three largest wine producers in they have the i know they have the largest uh winery in southeastern europe mm -hmm. and and so that also includes that's including romania bulgaria and greece okay so it's i mean there's there's some serious stuff serious volume happening there yeah yeah so yeah look at montenegro it has uh, it has the largest single plot vineyard that is like 2540 hectares it's a single plot so you literally can't see the end so for people i don't know let's go by acres for if, if you're english so my dad's a farmer and we have a big farm for uh, for a lot of people over a, a thousand hectares that's 2500 acres so if you're talking about 2,500 hectares, we're talking that's close to that's close to 65 6,500 acres. 
it sounds big. And when you see it up close, yeah. you're like, wow. That's <laughs> yeah. And got you. That's you. Well, I think I've driven by it because it's it's just like it's like you it's at on Lake Skadar uh in, yeah. in, in Montenegro, and that lake's huge, and you're just like because I've driven by many times, and it's like yeah, like I, because I always read that. I read and I, everyone. Everyone's got this little like the biggest single plot. And I was like, yeah, like I can't even, can't even see. Probably it ends at the border with Albania or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's it's there's some real and, and you know what? It's not only that though. There's, I think what exact wine trail is all about really is there's so many inspiring stories to be had, and there's a lot of producers that are putting everything online, putting putting the bounds in all parts of the world and that's the stuff we want to share heck we were in thailand last year and there's a there's a guy that's spearheaded the thai wine industry and the wines are fantastic there's so many interesting stories to be found all around the world and fantastic wines so uh i think people should always drink adventurously and never stop exploring yeah and also challenge perception as well just like as you were talking about it you know plantage in montenegro makes some of the best granites and then we have Stoli in North Macedonia making some of the best wine. We have Vina Laguna making some of the best Malvasia. So I think it's also very important, especially for value-driven uh, wine lovers. There's so many things, so many perceptions that we can challenge ourselves and for us to always get into the discomfort zone to learn more and to taste more. Yeah. And uh, I think you can see this as well as, you know, as we kind of wind this down, the, uh, I think if you're willing to try new things, wine, food, uh, that shows the kind of person you are, and we need more. We need more of those people in the world. Yeah, people that are more open-minded to try different things, try new things. Oh yeah, I, I agree. And, and I mean, the, the whole experience thing is. I mean, that that's key. I mean, you guys review so much wine on your site. It's it's it's. I mean, there's so many things like, oh, I haven't even tried this, let alone visit it. But there's so many. There's so much good wine. I could say like you, but you have to. With, with what you do, you probably sift through some of the other wines that are not so good, but but the, it's like you have the good wines and the great wines, and then you are like, and then you you can always find some of those that are tied with a really great experience or, a, you know, just the kind of a personal feeling you get from some of these places, because one thing for sure in my, in my experience is in Slovenia and Croatia, and a little bit with Montenegro and Bosnia, is winemakers can make a lot more time for you, even when you're there in very, very small yeah. numbers. Very true, yeah. Exactly, it's, and that's and that really just adds to the old experience because these days, you're right, uh, actually maybe less than 10% of the wines that we taste actually go up on our site. They, we taste a lot of crap, we, ta we, ta we recommend the best, ta taste a lot of crap, but uh, there's never been a better time as a wine than right now. You know, World. so much I think nowadays people you know you can get good wines everywhere people are looking for connection experience and being part of a store yeah exactly yeah I, I would 100 percent agree with that well i tell you what i would i would love to have you guys back on sometime to talk to talk for for those people who want to go even a little geekier i'd love to get on and talk about georgian and armenian wines uh, and and some of those places there because that's even let's say less discovered than uh, than and then Croatia and Slovenia and this kind of former ex Yugoslav countries. Um, so for everyone watching, I'm gonna I will get some links up for for the the sites they mentioned, um, and I'll have that up real soon. So in the next 10 15 minutes, people can check back on the site and we'll have that. Um, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate that this was fun. But Thank we you. gotta we gotta do it in person. Like we gotta do something in person the next that. time. You know? yeah. I know you will in person next time we see you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll I'll bring it to I'll bring it to like the places around where I'm at or whatever. So once the COVID borders go away, then we'll need to catch up uh, in real time. So th thanks for being on. Um, thanks everyone for watching, and um, we'll we'll. Sarah will be back soon with, with her normal programming, but remember, we will always try something, try to have some wine-related thing on Wines Day. So take care, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank Thanks you. for watching. Bye-bye.